you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Hi there. Have you heard of alopecia? If you haven't, you are missing out on critical knowledge about a condition affecting millions worldwide. Alopecia is a term used to describe hair loss, which has become a common problem amongst people of all ages and backgrounds. If you or someone you know is dealing with alopecia, then you need to hear this. I have written a book that will change your life title, Alopecia, It's a Thing, Breaking Through the BS or the Belief System and How to Overcome the Emotional Struggles Associated with Hair Loss. Now, in this book, I reveal the little known truths about alopecia, including its causes and symptoms and the treatment options available. This book contains practical tips and advice that have helped many sufferers of alopecia reclaim themselves and their confidence. But that's not all. In Alopecia is a Thing, I share personal stories from people who have gone through the alopecia journey and how they beat the condition to take back their lives. Now these stories are a testament to the resilience and strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Whether you have been diagnosed with alopecia or know someone who has, this book is the perfect guide to help you navigate your way through the condition. Alopecia is a thing was written for everyone. You don't have to be a woman with hair loss to understand this book, but you must have an open mind to. If you're ready to take control of your life and regain your confidence, then Alopecia is a Thing is the perfect resource for you. Visit my website, alopeciaisathing.com, and let's journey towards an, if not hairier, but emotionally healthier future together. Did you know that suicide is the 11th leading cause of death in the United States alone? An estimated 49,000 plus people are, the lives are affected every year. Hi, my name is Stephanie Anderson and welcome to the Main Health Show. And today's topic matter is very needed to be discussed, but I just wanna let you know of viewer discretion because of children. Uh, but we hope that this is a subject that you will be mindful to share with your children as we share with you. Today, we're going to dive into this subject with my very special in-house guest, Ms. Julia Hewitt from the AFSP, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention uh, South Texas Chapter and uh, she is going to tell you about the different programs, what they're doing, and all the information that you'll need in order to be well informed. So, uh, with no further ado, welcome to Maine Health, Julia. Would you please do me the honor of uh, introducing yourself, and please don't be modest, <laughs> tell us all about you, your role at the AFSP, and what it is that you're doing in the program. Sure. 
Thank you for having me, first of all, and thank you for having the organization. So as you said, we are the South Texas chapter and I am the chapter chair for the board of directors. And every state has at least one chapter. It's a national organization. Texas has five because of how vast it is. Um, and other states have several as well. It just depends on kind of the density of the population and how much it's needed. We, we cover um, 42 counties. So San Antonio, actually New Braunfels now, all the way to Corpus Christi and Laredo and Uvalde and kind of everything in between. And I say that to kind of paint the picture of how different the needs mm -hmm. could be, right? You know, the uh, population of San Antonio is very different from the population of Laredo, yeah. and um, the needs are different, yes. and some specific um, issues that the, they struggle with could be very different. Mm -hmm. So we really try to adapt what we do to what the community needs in that particular place. Um, we are a health organization, and so we focus on public health, we focus on education around prevention, um, fundraising, advocacy, and um, kind of community support. So some of the things that you might have heard um, or seen us talk about, if you follow us on social media, um, we do community events like the Out of the Darkness Walk that yes. we do every year. Or um, in Corpus Christi, we partner with the Texas A&M University, and we do a campus walk for students, awesome. you know. Um, and then we do kind of other things in between, like in March, we have a hike coming up, Hike for Hope, and really, again, anything and everything in between where we needed. And then where the money goes from the fundraising, it goes right back into the programs that we build for the community. So um, we have programs for, um, you know, the younger population. I just mm -hmm. did a full day at, a, at Lee High School where we sent 200 plus students through uh, It's Real, it's called, uh, okay. for teens and mental health. And just kind of like, if you're okay. worried about a friend, how to ask them the awkward questions, you yes. know, and what to do if they do you know, talk to you about what they're struggling with. Then we do Talk Saves Lives, which yes. is really like a program for... <laughs> yes, we definitely want to get up, get yeah. into that. And it's so good to know that with Texas being the, the huge state that it is, that um, the thoughtfulness was taken into making sure that as many counties and mm -hmm. cities, uh, five, um, you said five five, chapters. five mm -hmm. chapters are here, so that's great. And knowing that the communities, because there are different needs in mm -hmm. every community, knowing that. And then the walks, just great to know. But I had a specific question because, yeah. um, because suicide is a topic that affects so many, and you have addressed the need to strategically approach it for each community because the needs vary. You were getting ready to talk about <laughs> <laughs> the um, the community program that mm -hmm. was specifically pretty much developed for the African American or, or the Black community mm -hmm. called Let's Save Lives. So February being Black History Month and this being February, <laughs> just thought that it would be great if you could really talk about the approach that you're taking with that uh, program while it was developed. I do know that sometimes in the African-American community, the subjects like um, suicide are taboo, mental health intervention and the like. So I believe that this is a beneficial program for so many. So take your time, if you would, and Absolutely. just tell us in-depthly about uh, Let's Save Lives. Absolutely. Thank you. And, you, you know... Thank you for getting trained on the program yes. to be a trained presenter. Yes. Uh, so that is something that we also try to do is to really involve anybody who's interested in presenting for us. Yes. Um, Let's Save Lives emerged as kind of a standalone program, like you said, for the Black African American community mm -hmm. specifically. We've had one um, was that was for uh, Hispanic Latinx. Okay. We're part of the program is presented in Spanish, and there's some room for specific, you know, statistics mm -hmm. for that population. But we really didn't have anything for the Black African American community, and really that's where the risk exists, especially at the intersection of the ages. You know, mm -hmm. the younger and younger generations uh, begin to struggle. Yes. Um, we've had something in the past, um, and it was called Soul Shop, but it was really more geared towards the black churches. Okay. And there was nothing for somebody that said, well, you know, I, maybe I don't really 
want to touch kind of the church connection what mm -hmm. about just the community connection in general yes. and um, so that's kind of where we tested let's and okay. it was developed by a black clinician uh, Victor Armstrong is one of our yes. uh, uh, leaders in the national organization and we tested it in five I believe different markets you know okay. um, North Texas being one okay. for so they've they've tested that out and um, now as of this January, it started rolling out to yeah. all of the chapters and all the communities. And very broadly, you know, the thought was that, you know, talk saves lives is a great name because we believe that talking mm -hmm. about it really gets the subject out of mm -hmm. the shadows, so to speak, right, and, and kind of removes the stigma. But specific to the Black African American community, the feedback was there has to be something beyond just talking. Yeah. You know, and so let's start with listening and empathy. And that's what mm -hmm. possibly was not necessarily maybe missing, but not as highlighted yes. as it should have been. Mm -hmm. um, because once again, one of the main um, struggles specific to uh, that population is that where do I go with this? Exactly. You know, usually in the past, unfortunately, historically, the family was kind of like, that's not the subject we mm -hmm. want to talk about. We'll Even communities, yeah, house. you know, mm -hmm. uh, communities, communities of faith just kind of said, well, we'll focus on the spiritual side of things, yeah. right? Not maybe the clinical side of things. So yes. this was really kind of an emerging way to address it. Mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, we, when we were testing it, we also said our typical kind of module of the program probably about an hour, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. an hour, 15 minutes. But because it focuses on the audience kind of talking back, you yes. know, and, and yes. listening more so, yes. um, it is a longer program than others, you know. Mm -hmm. And as we're delivering it, we're seeing that there's that need for, you know, feedback being built into the curriculum and yes. things like that. And I think that's good. And you mentioned, which I was um, very impressed with the training. Mm -hmm. Uh, having just went through the actual uh, process of being a presenter, yes. um, how uh, detailed it was specifically for our community and the thought process that went into it to make it so personal for our community. Um, and you're right when he says let's and listening and empathy, which is something that we do all have we, I know you didn't want to say it's missing because we mm -hmm. do have it, but a lot of times it is not necessarily practiced, mm -hmm. especially when there's a fear component. Right. And um, knowing that, and it's so funny that I was sharing with a colleague um, about today's show and the subject matter that we will be sharing today. And she just informed me a very dear friend just lost her young son mm -hmm. to suicide. And we just kind of had to talk that, you know, <laughs> historically, um, it's like, oh, we don't want to touch that subject and lives are being lost. So I think it's just was so uh, forthcoming to note that this is a subject matter that really needs to be talked about mm -hmm. and that we need to. A lot of times in the community, it's like we're just going to keep that in the house. Right. What goes on in the house stays in the house, but not always is ignorance bliss, right? Mm -hmm. So things need to be talked about. Um, and another thing, being a woman of faith, knowing that I didn't know about the previous um, mm -hmm. uh, program that you had, the faith-based one. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that there is such a faith-based one for those who, because I believe in prayer changes mm -hmm. things, but I believe that there should be some type of emphasis on clinical assistance okay. as well and I think it's th that way to join mm -hmm. the two I think one is important as well as the other so um what have you seen I know it's just rolling out because I mm -hmm. just finished my I think it was the beginning of uh February yeah. was it <laughs> just so many days but just recently finishing the training was very impressed by the numbers of facilitators and people who came to be presenters from all around not mm -hmm. just Texas because there's such a need has there been any type of um, um, statistical information or something to show exactly what the process for those markets that have already mm -hmm. um, been uh, presented to so far so the way we've we've tested it is obviously kind of um, 
It's a survey that, you mm-hmm. know, the individual takes before and after, and some preliminary numbers are very encouraging, um, especially in the younger population, which, again, is at a higher risk. Um, unfortunately, for, um, you mentioned suicide being the 11th cause of death, mm-hmm. death in general, you know, but for ages 10 to 34, it's the second meeting. So that's where it's, you know, needed. Um, and after completing the program, 73% of the participants said they're more likely to talk to somebody okay. about it. And really, that's the beginning, yes. right, of what we want to accomplish. And we'll yes. continue testing to see what the response is like. Um, we have some uh, new PSAs that okay. uh, that we've released as well with the partnership with the organization called Seize the Awkward. Um, and it's specifically aimed at the community of color. Okay. Um, and actually, I'm wearing this shirt. It's called Talk Away the Dark. I like that. And... <laughs> and the PSA itself, I don't, I won't do it justice. You know, I, I'll send you a link if you'd like to also yes, to watch definitely. it. But it, it kind of, um, it shows families kind of saying things exactly what you mm-hmm. were were saying. Things like, you know, stop with this depression. That's for white people, mm-hmm. you know. Or in our house, we don't cry. You mm-hmm. know, um, what more do you want? I put a roof over your head. What mm-hmm. do you have to be sad about? Like mm-hmm. things that the young generation probably maybe he still hears yes. you may be hearing still you know and definitely has heard in the past mm-hmm. and so we're trying to again kind of bring that awareness that yes. that's really no longer how we think about things and it is okay to you know talk about how we struggle yes. nobody's exempt from it yes. you know it transcends you know demographics demographic, social, social economic, standing yes. economics everything mm-hmm. yes yes and so I think it bears repeating again that ages 10 to 34, four. that suicide is the number two cause of death. Mm-hmm. That is startling. And just so happens that the colleague that I was speaking of, the young man fell perfectly in between those two. So um, what would you say to someone who possibly, because it's a blessing if you get the uh Forethought, if someone actually is kind of telling you Mm -hmm. what it is, because most of the time people don't. Or in hindsight, something is said, and you're like, oh, my gosh, they said this. What would you say to someone who may have a friend that has confided in them Mm -hmm. how they're feeling or that they're noticing that something has changed, how to even broach that subject matter with them to get them help? And we believe that there are signs, you know, but it's also important to remember that sometimes they're not yes. you know and it's it's important for the person that's kind of left with questions to mm-hmm. also remove that blame you know yes. there really are times when we did not see it yes. you know but sometimes there are and there mm-hmm. are signs that we could look at and especially kind of the combination of mm-hmm. factors it's important um i would say you know listening for things like things are just not getting better mm-hmm. you know they continue to kind of speak in the sense of uh, with a sense of hopelessness. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there's things like they continue repeating things like, I'm so tired of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wish this would all just go away yes. or I wish things were just different, mm-hmm. you know. And again, sometimes people say that, yeah. you know, and there's no follow-up to it. It's just out yeah. of frustration. But if it's kind of a continuing theme recurring, um, things like they withdraw, mm-hmm. you know, they tend to maybe sleep more or less, mm-hmm. you know, or... Um, you see behaviors that are not typical for them. Again, they could withdraw from activities that they liked. They could engage in other activities that are like not like them. You yeah. know, take more risks. Almost kind of like try to push They're the down. you yeah, know push the envelope. Yeah, push yeah. the envelope. Um, giving away things. Mm-hmm. You know, not planning maybe for past a certain time. Yeah. You know, um, you could see even you know as overt as their search history could point to something like that or you see some items you're like why would you buy that you know um so in and of itself it you know this this could be nothing but when it's like a combination of factors that's usually the um some signs and if you are seeing these and you know sometimes it's like um it's better to ask if you have some kind of a gut feeling or if you're just kind of like something just doesn't sit right with me here mm-hmm. you know it's always better to ask and be wrong <laughs> than, yes. than not to ask better safe than sorry exactly yes. um yes. you know uh sometimes you don't know maybe it's not suicide that's extreme mm-hmm. you know um but just asking yeah. could stop a person from yeah. whatever the next stage of of their depression is you know and and yeah. kind of snap back to maybe i do need help if yes. people are noticing you know things like that and you were saying it may not be suicide 
It just may be another form of self-harm. Exactly. It may be cutting mm-hmm. or something. And like you said, the risk factor where sometimes people who may not really daredevil, but you start seeing the change. Mm-hmm. But like you said, having the conversation of some sort, just inquiring, mm-hmm. it's better not to have the conversation than something happened. And then, like you said, hindsight is twenty twenty, And then the blame game, which nobody can blame themselves mm-hmm. because sometimes... Um, it's just a fear that keeps a person from having a conversation. Absolutely. You don't feel trained. Or you Like, what if they ask me this and I don't know? Mm-hmm. But there are resources such as the AFSP uh, and their different numbers, toll numbers they can call in different places that are free and no mm-hmm. charge that they can really go to. So it's better to say something than to do nothing, correct? Absolutely. You know, I'll, uh, I have a, a, a friend at work, you know, and he, very well adjusted, very mm-hmm. funny, you know. But I would just hear him say things like, my dog was sick, two of my kids were sick, this happened, that happened, and then this happened. And it just, it was kind of like, I'm like, wow, that's mm-hmm. like eight things that happened to this person in a very short span. Let mm-hmm. me reach out and just make yes. sure. And I did, and he was absolutely blown away by that because he said, you know, I was in such a dark place because of all these things. And I didn't think like I would mention these things, but nobody picked up on these. And to me, it was just concerning that wow. that's a lot. You know, yes. I wasn't thinking he yes. was, you know, I didn't see any other signs, yes. you know, and it was very pleasant. But it, it, it's just an example of, you know, sometimes you do something like that just mm-hmm. off of, you know, I've heard these things that like, that's, that's a lot. Maybe he mm-hmm. needs some help. And it really moved him back from whatever he was contemplating yes. next. You know? Wow. But you had the conversation. Exactly. You're trained to hear those little cues and different things. And like we say, it's better to have the conversation than not. Mm-hmm. I'd rather err on the side of caution, side of caution. Than, than not to. Um, and, you, you know, sometimes you're absolutely right. Um, what's keeping us back, it it could be the fear of, okay, I'm going to ask and they're going to be like, why would you say that? Yeah. I'm offended or, yeah. you know, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, how would you think that of me? Yeah. You know, that's one possibility yeah. right but the other possibility could be that they do tell you <laughs> yes i am thinking about this so mm-hmm. it's kind of like being ready for you can get a variety of answers yeah. you can get the why would you say that yeah you know then you can say you know what i'm so glad i'm wrong yeah exactly. i was just i was just yeah. worried about you because i care yes. and you know yeah. uh but if they do go the route of matter of fact i'm glad you asked because yes. i was kind of in a dark place yes. or they could write out come right out and say yes i'm thinking about and killing myself what are you going to do about yes. it you know people are in pain you yes. know when when that happens and you could be prepared for some aggression even mm-hmm. possibly or you know um sometimes it's like look this is kind of beyond me mm-hmm. i i don't feel equipped to deal with this especially if they share other things because yes. sadly sometimes it comes with revelations of um you know other things that they've been struggling yes. with and you know, unless you truly are a trained professional, it's like, yes. I don't know what to do with all yes. this, right? Like, but let me get you to a resources, place, some exactly. resources, somebody that can help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing starts with talk, Yep. having a conversation Absolutely. and then having resources that you can refer them to because even being trained, I'm not the therapist or whatever. I'm a, well, I'm a behind the chair therapist, so to speak, <laughs> but... I know I'm a lane and I stay in it, but having resources to actually be able to legitimately refer them to. Mm-hmm. So we've got five minutes left and I just kind of want to talk about, you know, we talked about South Texas chapter and what it is. Are there any upcoming events or initiatives that uh, you may want to share with the uh, viewership of the Maine Health Show? Yeah, well, you mentioned being trained in, in Let's Save yes. Lives. Um, we're really excited about this. And the reason why, you know, we would like to have more people join and be trained is because we'd like for that voice to come from the black community, right? Yes. You know, um, I don't want to necessarily present the program. I don't have the same experience. Yes. I could never understand, you know, and I would, you know, it, it would have to come from somebody who's had, you know, something uh yeah relatable happen you know mm-hmm. and kind of understands the mm-hmm. um so we kind of want it to be an authentic uh connection yes. uh while we'll provide the resources etc mm-hmm. we wanted to make sure that you know it's it's representative of the community that yes. we're trying to help um so that's a huge thing we're trying to get all of our presenters to have a connection to the community that they're yes. supporting yes, exactly. um we have uh in, on the large scale though we do have our hike for hope coming up it's in okay. march um, hike for hope. and we like it because you know 
it's outside. It's yes. a, the Government Canyon. We we think that's a part beautiful of, place. It's yes. a beautiful place. You can it bring is. your dog. You yeah. can bring your kids. And, <laughs> and that's Mar- do you have a specific date? Mm-hmm. In March twenty third. March twenty third. Okay. It's a Saturday. I hope. <laughs> yes. And then um, what else do we have planned? I mentioned our campus walk in. Corpus Christi, we have our Out of the Darkness Walk now set up. Okay. It's going to be November 2nd, Okay, uh, but we'll, we'll have more information on that closer to the date. And then in between, it's really, we're just okay. um, open to, you know, programs and events. Um, we're starting to fill up every, every <laughs> month. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness it Month, is. so we usually have quite a few things going on during that month, but okay. um, would love to, you know, just if you, if you need to... Uh, have us present to the community or come out to an event and table, offer information. We have. And that's how we met Mm -hmm. at uh, the inaugural uh, Alamo Alopecia support group Mm -hmm. that was uh, started. Uh, The AFSP so graciously came out. That's how I met Julia, because there is um, an increase in numbers of suicide in the alopecia community. Mm -hmm. So it was just really good to have you guys come out. So any organizations that maybe think that they would like the AFSP out in the area, just connect with them. So how would, we got a couple of minutes <laughs> left, so, and we've covered so much, but how would they, you said, so they would know the, as events happen to be added to the calendar, mm-hmm. how would they get in touch? Is there a website, a number, or how would someone who's interested in being um, trained as a presenter or just to get information to help someone, how would they go about connecting with the AFSP? Of course. Um, our website is afsp.org slash South Texas. And then on social media, we're at, at AFSP South Texas, Instagram okay. and Facebook and Twitter. Okay. And then we're on LinkedIn as well. Okay. And we usually try to post opportunities all across the channels. Uh, always looking for volunteers as yes. well. Um, I didn't say that in the beginning, but we're um, 100% volunteer based. So yes. everything we do is kind of outside of, you know, whatever our daily lives and yes. work <laughs> is. So the more we can, um, the more individuals we can kind of get to donate their time. And again, we're open to, if you have an hour, we'll take the hour. Yes. If you'd like to be on our board, we'll take that time commitment too. Yes. So whatever you're comfortable with, we're, uh, we're open and we'd like to welcome everyone. Well, I can say personally, um, having just been acquainted with the organization recently and learning about all the programs that you offer and being trained uh, as a presenter, that if you have time to be able to share with this organization, um, not everything that you get benefited is through monetary gains. Just knowing that you can save or change a life or just being productive in your community it, it's just more than money a lot of Absolutely. times so I'm, I'm thankful for that opportunity looking forward to uh presenting yes. the let's save lives initiative for the black community and i may be able to participate in some of these walks i need some exercise <laughs> <laughs> but i just wanted to say thank you so much julia for coming by the main health studio on the show um and I would love to have you in again sometimes to talk about different We'd love things. to be back. Okay. Thank you for having me. And that does it for today's episode of the Main Health Show. Um, and as always, hope to see you again and be blessed. Bye-bye. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You alright? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. 
whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay?